Libra, December is going to ask that you remain adaptable and flexible. There's a new you that is emerging, but you seem a little hesitant in stepping into this new part of your life. Be receptive and be open. Things around you may be changing this month, but they're ultimately changing for the better. If you'd like to know more, keep watching and I'll explain all about it. everybody it's your girl mellow divine feminine works and i am here to help you uncover your divinity and discover your magic if you're new here welcome if you're returning welcome back this channel is everything tarot astrology spirituality and manifestation so if those are the things you like if those are the things you love if those are the things you want to learn more about don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you'll always be notified when I come out with new content. And speaking of content, head over to Instagram and follow me over there at Divine Feminine Works. Every day I've got a ton of tarot, manifestation, astrology content that will really help you out. So follow me over there so you don't miss out on any of that good stuff. All right, so this is going to be the astral forecast and tarot scope for the month of December 2021. I don't know about you, but I'm still kind of blown that it is December of 2021. I felt like 2021 sounded so futuristic, it sounds so far away, and now we are at the tail end of it. And can't say I'm mad about that. I mean, I'm ready to move on, hopefully to bigger and better things. And I believe that 2022 is going to give us just that. But before I get ahead of myself, it's time to talk about the here and now. And as always, you know the deal, we start with the astrology. So the theme of this month, if we have to sum up December in one sort of short, concise sentence, it would be when one door closes, another opens. That's sort of how this month is playing out. Because we begin the month right in the thick of equality eclipse season. So two weeks ago, we had a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. And then right at the beginning of December, we have a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Sagittarius. So eclipses are the universe's way of sort of cleaning things up in our lives and in society in general. So eclipses either take things out of our lives or put things in. It's the universe's way of setting order. And so when we have this kind of energy, um, it's sort of like you not only have to roll with the punches, but you have to be open to receiving and letting go of what you want on the one hand and what no longer serves you on the other. And that's pretty much how this month is going to go. Again, the highlight of this month is the new moon solar eclipse. But Another way to think about this month or another way to look at this month is that there's a lot of movement this month, a lot of energy shifts. So we have four planets that are actually changing signs. We've got two planets that are changing directions and we have an eclipse. So if you find that at the end of the month, if you're sort of assessing how December was for you and you feel like December sort of had you feeling unsettled, a little bit unstable, that's because things are shifting and moving around. And that energy actually started last month in November with the eclipse, okay? So it's, like I said before, it's really about rolling with the punches and sort of letting things, let the chips fly, let things sort of move as they need to, and then sort of assess and get a lay of the land, all right? So let's go through the month chronologically and see what we've got. So we open up the month with the planet Neptune going direct in its home sign of Pisces. So Neptune was retrograde from June 25th of this year, and now it is turning direct. And we all know that when a planet goes retrograde, it's like, you sort of take the energy and the characteristics of that planet and you direct it inward. So instead of things being um, directed outward in your life, you're taking a hard look at yourself, you're reflecting, you're remembering, you're doing all of that with respect to that particular planet's energy. So Neptune is all about fantasy. It's all about illusion. It's about love. It's about um, dreams, those kind of things. And so when Neptune went retrograde back in June, all of that stuff kind of went out the window. 
Neptune retrograde allows you to see the realness, the harshness, and the ugliness of life. And trust and believe, I think we can all agree that we've really been seeing that. Definitely over the last couple of years, but specifically as Neptune has been retrograde, we've been seeing things for what they really are. The rose-colored glasses come off and we see life as it is. But now that Neptune is going direct, now we're going to be able to take what we've learned while Neptune was retrograde and apply that to life and be optimistic. Regardless of what we've seen, the harshness and the, uh, the harshness and ugliness of life, I feel like now we're able to move forward and we can dream again. We can have high hopes. We can be optimistic despite uh, the reality of, you know, life. But you sort of take that, it's, it's like you take you know, the things that you've learned while Neptune was retrograde and you apply it to, you know, your life going forward, but you, you're more optimistic, you're more hopeful. All right. So that's really how Neptune direct is going to affect us. And it all depends on where that falls in your chart. Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. So it's energy is extra potent. It's great for creative endeavors. It's great for us to recognize and appreciate humanity on a collective level. It's about being selfless compassionate, empathic. So all of these things are going to sort of, we're going to be able to uh, feel those things again, okay? So that's how we start out the month. And then the star of the month is, like I said, the new moon solar eclipse happening in the sign of Sagittarius, and that's going down on Saturday, December 4th. So new moons are all about new beginnings. And a new moon solar eclipse is a new beginning in a very big way. It's like a new moon on steroids. This particular new moon, this particular solar eclipse, I should say, really is about like an ending and a beginning wrapped up in one. That's kind of why I said the theme for this month is when one door closes, another opens. On the one hand, not only is this um, the final eclipse in the Gemini Sagittarius cycle that we've kind of been going through for the last 18 months or so. It's also happening at the 12th degree and the 12th degree is the Pisces degree. The Pi And as we know, Pisces is the final sign in the Zodiac. So there is a certain element of finality with this particular um, eclipse. So like I said, something is going to end and something is going to begin sort of simultaneously. Although you're not going to feel it right in the moment. It's not like Saturday is going to get here and you're going to be like, okay, something ends, something begins, I'm done. This energy is fluid and it's definitely playing out over the next couple of months. So be prepared for things to sort of shift within that time frame. This new moon solar eclipse allows us to have a clean slate and a fresh start, and it eclipses things into our lives. So I don't know about you, but at the time of the full moon lunar eclipse last month, um, I experienced a lot of endings. Um, people that I was close to, someone that I was very close to passed away. Um, things were very jarring, you know, things were sort of being eclipsed out. Now at this new moon solar eclipse, you may notice that things are being eclipsed in, things are being added to your life. People may be coming in, you may be going to a new place, experiencing new things, especially being in the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius likes to live large and in charge. It's all about adventure, broadening your horizon. So it's going to be this very, uh, expansive new beginning. There's also going to be an element of limitation and unexpected happenings with this new moon solar eclipse because we've got Uranus and Saturn in the mix. And I'm going to do a separate video on these eclipses generally and go more into the astrology of each particular eclipse. But just know that things may be a little difficult. Things, you know, Saturn is an energy of limitation, of obstacles. It's also... um of endings also and karma. So you may find that things are finally wrapping up in a particular area of your life only for a new door to open and a new adventure, you know, to um, embark upon. So that's sort of how this eclipse is playing out. All right. So moving right along, we have Mercury entering into Capricorn on December 13th. And Mercury in Capricorn is very serious. Um, our thoughts, our communications become serious, practical, down to earth. We become more focused and think more about work, 
being disciplined, perhaps overcoming obstacles. A lot of what we talk to people about and a lot of what we think about centers around work. It centers around serious matters. So that's how Mercury in Capricorn is going to play out. And again, that's going down on December 13th. That same day, December 13th, Mars is going to be moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Mars being a fire sign and moving into a fire sign makes Mars sort of extra happy. And this is really about, we become motivated by our desire to act according to our ideals and beliefs. Sagittarius, apart from just, you know, ruling long distance travel, higher education, Sagittarius is all about expanding our minds. And it's also about faith, belief, and spirituality. And so now Mars being a very action oriented planet, a planet that is concerned with, um, initiation, we're going to want to move according to what we believe in and what we have faith in and being very strong and convicted in those beliefs. Additionally, we'll want to start new adventures, blaze new trails, start new projects, initiate a whole bunch of things on a very grand scale, right? The only thing you'll have to keep in mind is that Mars and Sagittarius is like great for starting things, but not necessarily finishing. So you may have all of these projects that you start, you may have multiple projects or you may have one big project. It's going to be very important for you to keep your level of motivation high because in the beginning, you're going to be really fired up. You're going to be like, yes, I want to do this. Let's do it. Let's go for it. And then shortly thereafter, you're going to be like, eh, whatever, or it goes by the wayside or anything like that. So that's definitely going to be something that you want to be mindful of when Mars enters Sagittarius. All right. So moving right along, we have the full moon in Gemini going down on December 18th. And obviously... If you've watched any of my videos before, you already know that full moons illuminate. Full moons are either the culmination of a manifestation or they illuminate something that's been hidden. Gemini rules communication, it rules siblings, it rules extended family members, short distance travel, business, sort of your everyday busy body kind of energy is what Gemini is. And so with this, you're going to find that you'll probably either be really busy around this full moon, your communication with people is going to ramp up, you may be taking short distance trips, maybe you planned a short distance trip. Um, you know, sometime prior, and now you're finally going on it, you may find that, um, Something that you thought about back at the new moon in Gemini back in June now is coming to fruition. You may find that just your general environment is just busy. That's sort of how this full moon is going to play out. And again, that is on December 18th. Moving right along, the next day on December 19th, we have Venus going retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. So Venus in Capricorn is very serious as well. Just like I spoke about Mercury in Capricorn being serious, Venus is the same thing, but its energy is more focused on relationships, money, things that we value, aesthetics, beauty, comfort, luxury, all of those things become very serious, very tangible, and very down to earth. Venus in Capricorn is the energy that's going to get you to save money to buy a big ticket item. It's going to have you make a plan of action to redo your house, uh, have a relationship. It's very practical, diligent, and down to earth. That's when Venus is direct in Capricorn. So now when Venus is retrograde in Capricorn, we take that energy and we direct it inward. So this really becomes how do... What are the things that I value in my life? What is important to me? What are the criteria that I need to be in a relationship? Everything that Venus is about, we direct that inward. And being in Capricorn, we take a very practical, down-to-earth um, uh, focus to it. Even creativity becomes very much more practical. How do I do things? How do I make money from what I create? What values are important to me in relationships with respect to assets? Um, what's fair in my life? Am I being fair to myself? So that Venusian energy, everything Venus is going to be directed inward when Venus goes retrograde. And again, that's on December 19th. Moving right along on December 21st, Capricorn season officially begins when the sun moves into Capricorn. So there's a lot of Capricorn energy this month. So if you feel like December is really sort of heavy, it's sort of not very exciting. I mean, the holidays are around, so there's that certain element to that. But maybe you think about the holidays in terms of how much money am I spending? How much do how much overtime do I have to work in order to buy people presents? Those are the sort of Capricorn like thoughts that um 
a characteristic of the sun in Capricorn. We become very disciplined. Work becomes a real thing. We uh, focus on getting things done in a practical down to earth sort of way. Our status in life becomes something that we become concerned about. Um, business, you know, all of those sort of mundane practical things are what are characteristic of Capricorn season. And again, that begins on December 21st when the sun moves into Capricorn. And then finally, we close out the month with Jupiter heading into its home sign of Pisces. Jupiter in Pisces is like love, an overdose of love. Jupiter is all about expansion and growth, right? And so Jupiter in Pisces is really about expanding our awareness of spirituality, compassion, and love. But love on a grander scale. It's not like how you love your parent, how you love your child, how you love your spouse or your significant other. It's how you love humanity. Your love grows and your love expands, right? You start to, uh, Pisces is a very intuitive sign. It's a very sensitive sign and an empathic sign. So during Pi so whenever there is a planet in Pisces, particularly Jupiter, we feel other people's emotions. We feel sensitive, compassionate, and empathic towards other people in a very big way, which is great because that helps us understand people and just spread love, right? But the thing with Pisces is that it can be a lot and it can be overwhelming. And so in feeling everything on a grand scale, you really may have the tendency to lose yourself. You start taking on other people's emotions, taking on other people's shit, and you get lost in the sauce, essentially. And with Pisces, uh, the signal, the signal, the um, symbol for Pisces being fish, you're sort of literally lost in the sauce, right? So with Jupiter and Pisces, what's going to be really important is for you to feel everything, right? But also take the time and extra room to feel for yourself. So you're going to have to close off to the world at times, rest, recharge, and um, get back to yourself because there's going to be a tendency to lose yourself. There's going to be a tendency to really, um, like I said, get lost in the sauce. So that is December in a nutshell. If you want to know more about what December has to offer, you can either check out the horoscopes, which are on my website, link in the description box below, or you can get a personal horoscope that is designed specifically for you. Whether it's one month, three months, or six months, you can figure out what December or any other month for that matter is going to look specifically for you. And if you wanna order that, that link is in the description box as well. All right, Libra, so December 2021 for you is all about being flexible and adaptable. Much like your other cardinal sign counterparts, which include Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn, you have an emphasis on your cadent houses. So by way of a quick astrology lesson, let me explain what that means. So the zodiac wheel is divided into 12 houses, and those 12 houses are grouped together in groups of four in three main categories. You have the angular houses, which is houses one, four, seven, and 10. And those houses are typical of cardinal energy. Those are the houses where you experience dynamic uh, new beginnings, starting new projects, being enterprising, etc. Then you have the four succeedant houses, which are houses two, five, eight, and 11. And those houses are about maintaining the energy, stability, plateau kind of energy, and those are typical of the fixed signs. And so when you think of succeeding houses, think of fixed energy, right? And then finally, you have the cadent houses, which is houses three, six, nine, and 12. And those are the houses where things break down and things shift so that you can open your mind, think in new and innovative ways in order to go in a new direction. So think about it like this. The angular houses are where you would plant the seed, the succeedant houses are where you would water and nurture the plant. And then the cadent houses are where the plant starts to wither and break down. Okay. And then you start the cycle all over again. So like I said, for you guys, you guys have a lot of cadent house energy this month, particularly your third, your sixth, and your ninth houses are going to be lit. But let me take it chronologically so you kind of understand what the month looks like for you. 
So we start out the month in Sagittarius season, and that is going to light up your third house of communication and ideas. So the third house also covers your immediate vicinity, your neighborhood, siblings, extended family members, neighbors, community members, short distance travel, transactions. The third house is a very busy body house, okay? And so you may find that during Sagittarius season, you're very busy. You're either doing paperwork, doing a lot of business, reaching out to neighbors, doing community events. Like Sagittarius season just finds you very busy. And things in your immediate vicinity are changing a lot this month. So things in your neighborhood may be changing a lot, particularly with the presence of the new moon solar eclipse in your third house. Your immediate vicinity may be upside down right now, okay? And that's to get you to move in a new direction, think differently and start something new, okay? So during Sagittarius season, you have the sun in your third house, you have the new moon solar eclipse, you have Mercury and you have Mars. So you've got a lot going on. Sagittarius season is a very busy month for you. And again, with the new moon solar eclipse, I feel like you guys are gonna be experiencing a lot of changes and shifts in your immediate environment, okay? Thereafter, when the sun moves into Capricorn, your fourth house of home and domestic affairs is going to be lit, okay? And your fourth house is going to contain the sun, Venus retrograde, Mercury, and Pluto has been hanging out in your fourth house for quite some time. So it's safe to say that your home and domestic affairs have been undergoing a serious transformation over the last year, over the last 18 months. And with the sun going into your fourth house, all of those changes and that transformation is really going to be highlighted. Now, the fourth house is not a Caden house. house. <laughs> the fourth house is an angular house. So when it comes to your home, your domestic affairs, your family members, you're going to want to take dynamic action, okay? So Capricorn season may find you also busy around the house or with your close family members because you're starting something new. There's going to be this surge of energy in that sector of your life, and that's probably going to prompt you to do something new, take on a new project, add new family members, change things around at home. You know, you get the deal. So again, the fourth house is not a cadent house. It's an angular house, but Capricorn season is going to find you being very bold and dynamic in your home or with your family members. All right. Next up is the sixth house. Your house of work and health is also lit this month because we've got Neptune direct in Pisces and we have Jupiter entering Pisces as well. And Pisces is your uh, sixth house. So what that means is that Jupiter is the great expander. Jupiter makes things larger. It grows things, right? And Neptune adds a level of fantasy and imagination to things. And with this going on in your sixth house, when it comes to work, you may find that your work, meaning the service that you do for others, may be a lot more idyllic. You may not be able to see a lot of the details I feel like you're going to start to see the big picture of why you do what you do and why you do your job for certain people or what your purpose may be. I feel like that's how Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces is really going to play out for you. In terms of health, I feel like you guys are not necessarily going to be paying much attention to your health at this time. Some of you may gloss over any health issues that may come up. You may just automatically ignore them. For others of you, you may find creative ways of staying healthy or adding um, a bit of creativity and flair to your daily regimen, if that makes any sense, okay? But again, this being a cadent house, things are going to be shifting. And because you've got Neptune and Jupiter in your sixth house, I feel like you're not necessarily going to really be in touch with how things are changing. Neptune is all about dreams and illusions. So whatever change you experience, I feel like you might just gloss it over. You may have rose colored glasses on and you may ignore it. You may not be really down to earth when it comes to these changes. Okay. So if you find that you're like that, or even even if you don't, because you might not even take notice, just know that that is sort of how the astrology plays out for you with respect to that. All right. And then finally, we have an emphasis on your ninth house when the full moon in Gemini occurs on December 18th. Full moons illuminate. So I want you to think back to June of this year. Perhaps at that time, you had a long distance trip that you were planning Perhaps you decided to go back to school. Maybe you commenced a legal proceeding at that time. And now at the full moon in Gemini, you're going to see that come to fruition. Maybe your legal situation has settled or maybe you've decided to go to trial. 
Maybe now you're graduating or you've completed a full semester or a full course worth of work during these last six months. For others of you, it's going to uncover something. You know, full moons illuminate and they bring light to things that have been hidden or in the dark for a while. So perhaps something, a foreign affair is going to be uncovered at the full moon, okay? Something is going to come to light that's going to show you, it's going to like change you. Let me not say change you. It's going to change the situation in sort of a big and dynamic way. And it may not be happening in your immediate vicinity. This may be happening very far away from you, uh, you know, across the country or across the world. This may be a change to society in general, because the ninth house also covers things like philosophy and, you know, those big grand ideas about humanity. So maybe you just are more tuned in to what's going on in the world, particularly with respect to injustices and things of that nature. And that sort of changes you, not changes you, but it opens your mind and gets you to think about things differently in order to make some new moves, okay? And so that's pretty much how December is looking for you. Again, you're gonna have to remain flexible, roll with the punches and keep your mind open because pretty soon it's gonna be time to make some changes in a new direction. All right, so now that we've gotten the astrology out of the way, let's get into the tarot and see what messages Spirit has for you this month. All right, Libra, so you know the deal. We've got three separate messages, one general, one love, and one career and money. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's start with the general message. Right, so what do we have for Libra for December 2021? Libra, okay. All right, we've got, oh, this is nice, new life. Okay, so this is new life. This is regeneration. This is a breath of fresh air in your life, okay? For some of you, I'm getting like children. So this could be literally a new life, giving birth to a new life. If so, congratulations. For others of you, it's like feeling like you're reborn in a sense. This is wonderful energy. Let's see what else we have here. Hmm, interesting. The plot thickens. We've got the five of wands. This denotes struggle. Conflict and competition is what the five of wands represents. Some of you are fighting this new life, okay? Some of you know that change is imminent, know that change is right around the corner, know that you have to change in order to have this new life, but you're kind of conflicted about it. Some of you may be feeling external pressure from others. I'm also hearing some of you are like keeping up with the Joneses. So you're in competition with people around you, like, okay, they've upgraded, so you want to upgrade too. And it's sort of, it's sort of stalling your development in a sense, because you're not paying attention to yourself. Okay. But regardless, there is this struggle. There's sort of this, I'm not going to say obstacle. I just feel like it's more like a reluctance. I'm getting a reluctant kind of energy to change or being resistant to allowing yourself to change. All right. Let's get one more card here on this general message for Libra. Okay. All right. So we've got message of concern. So this is the change that's going on. Remember I said you have a lot of cadent house energy, which is all about shifting and it's all about changing in order to get you to think differently. All right. So there's some sort of communication you're going to get. I don't necessarily feel like it's a, it's a, a tangible message. Like someone texts you or calls you. This could just be like something happening to you. That's a cause for concern that brings up the fact that you are changing or that you need to change. Okay. Again, for some of you, it could be some sort of external pressure with respect to changing. Maybe your family is like, I need you. Maybe it's like an intervention kind of situation where they they're telling you, listen, we notice you're going down this path or you're doing this and we don't want this for you, but you need to change. Okay. Keyword here is change. But look at this card with respect to new life. It's like you're waking up out of a sleep, like you've been dormant for a long time and now finally you're emerging. But there's gonna be some sort of pressure that's going to get you to do that. That's the change that's going to occur this month. All right, let's get into love and see what we have for you. For December, 2021. Oh, this is beautiful. We've got romance. All 
right, so when it comes to your romantic life, things are looking beautiful. I get the sense that things are blossoming, particularly with a relationship. For those of you that are single, I feel like a gesture is going to be made either by you or to you in order to begin a romantic relationship, but it's just generally feel good energy pertaining to your romantic life, okay? Very nice. Let's get another card here for love. For Libra, right, we have Queen of Swords. So this could involve a Queen of Swords. This could also be you because as an air sign, you would be represented by the Queen of Swords. Some of you are thinking about your romantic life. Perhaps some of you are thinking how you want it to be more romantic, more idyllic, more fairy tale love story, or just be more loving. Some of you are thinking about this. For some of you, this is how you're feeling and maybe you it's time to um, communicate that with your partner or it's time to find that in a partner. But there's a lot of contemplation going on with your romantic life this month, okay? Let's get one more card for this love reading. Okay. We've got courtship. So I'm getting the sense that this is a new relationship. Perhaps you're about to get into a new relationship or you recently got into a new relationship. Some of you have been doing a lot of serial dating. You've been dating a lot of different people, going out on different dates, you know, really living the single life, you know, and, and trying to figure out where you want to go and, you know, your options and whatnot. But you're kind of bored with that. Perhaps there's been a lack of romance in your dating life. Maybe it's been very mundane. Maybe it's been the same thing. Dinner, drinks, asking what your favorite color is. And you're like over it. Like you want romance. You want flowers. You want to feel those romantic feelings. So I get the sense that a lot of you have been dating. Even if you've been dating one person, it hasn't been for very long. But you want to inject more romance into your romantic life. That's pretty much the gist of it. All right, so now let's get into career and see what we have for you for December. Okay. We've got the crossroads. Interesting. So your other cardinal sign counterparts have also gotten this sort of crossroad energy, meaning that there's a decision that you have to make with respect to your career this month, with respect to your stability. I get the sense that you have several options in terms of what you do for work or how you make money. And now it's time to really hunker down on one particular option and make a decision. Like, do you want to pursue this further? I'm getting for some, like there's, there's a route that you want to take with your career that may involve more schooling or more skills that you may need to acquire. And you're like at a crossroads, like, do I want to go forward with this? Because if I go forward with this, this means that I'm going to have to either go back to school or I'm going to have to learn new skills. Or do I want to just go in a different direction where that isn't necessary? That's sort of the energy I'm getting with respect to your career. All right, let's get another card on here and see what else we have. It's too many. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Oops. Right, we've got Three of Swords. Interesting. So Three of Swords denotes a heartbreak heart-wrenching energy, okay? Some of you have been working multiple jobs and now it's like you may have to give up one of those jobs or you may have to go in a different direction from what you've normally been doing. And for some, I see that it's related to family. I don't know if your family obligations are making you like choose a certain path Something having to do with your family is making you have to make a career choice at this time. And for some of you, this choice is, it hurts. It's like heart wrenching. Or there could have been something that happened in your family that broke your heart, that was heart wrenching, and that is now forcing you to make a career or a money decision, okay? Let's get another card here. And so to close out this reading, what else do we have for Libra for career for December 2021? 
we have bad health. So either you or a family member is experiencing physical bad health right now. Your stability isn't doing that well. And now you've come to a decision. You've come to a point where you have to make a decision. Like, how do I make more money? Like my pockets have been suffering for a minute. And now it's time to go in a new direction or someone suddenly gets sick or maybe you get sick and it's affecting your career and your money and you need to go in a different direction. Okay. So to recap, this is what we have for the month. So something about you has to change. I feel like there may be some outside force that is forcing you to change, but you may be very resistant to it. Change is ultimately a good thing. And I think the new you that you're going to be stepping into is going to make you happy and it's going to be very pleasing to you. So try not to be so resistant to the change, but roll with the punches and remain open. Okay. When it comes to your love life, I feel like you want to inject more romance into your love life. Whatever you've been doing in the recent past just hasn't really been cutting it for you. And so maybe now may be time to find a partner who fits that idyllic romantic story that you have in your mind, or maybe time to communicate to your existing partner that you want more romance and more lovey-doveyness in your relationship. When it comes to your career, it's time to make a decision. Something may be happening with a family member or something has happened with a family member that's affecting your career and your money. And now you sort of have to hunker down and make an important decision regarding your career, your money, and your stability. So to wrap it all up, Libra, you know, December is all about rolling with the punches and being adaptable to change. This change is going to open your mind to get you to think in different ways so that you can make new moves in the near future. There's a new you that's emerging, perhaps as a result of some external forces. There's different things that you want, particularly with your romantic life. You want more romance and Things are really changing in a dynamic way with respect to your career, but it's ultimately for the best, okay? Change is the only constant that we have in life and that's what helps us evolve and move on to the next level and level up. So don't be resistant to change, be open, roll with the punches, and you may be pleasantly surprised at how this year ends. All right, my loves, that has been the astral forecast and tarot scope for the month of December 2021. I sincerely hope and affirm that you were able to get at least one important message from this reading. Speaking of readings, if you'd like to book a personal tarot reading with me or order a personalized astrology report, those links are in the description box below. So don't forget to check those out. And while you're checking things out, don't forget to to hit up my website, sign up for my newsletter. I give a whole bunch of free content on a regular basis. So sign up everywhere you can so you never miss out. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.